In 2017, we had 16 motorbikes stolen in Liverpool during the TT period. So we ran an operation to combat that in 2018 and reduced that to three UK registered bikes. My name is Dave York and I'm the sergeant from the operations motorcycle team here at Merseyside Police. I run a team of six uh, VIP trained motorcyclists uh, and one of our roles is to obviously conduct VIP escorts in Merseyside but to combat organised crime and its use of uh, motorcycles. And we're all TPAC trained drivers as well so we can drop between cars and bikes uh, when we need to but primarily we're on bikes all day every day. During the period of the 2017 TT, we had 16 UK registered motorcycles stolen from the area around Liverpool waterfront. Our operation was, it was designed all around preventing crime and helping people get to the TT, uh, so on their own bikes. So what we did was we deployed lots of unmarked and marked patrols all around the waterfront area during the time of the TT. What we did though, generally during the day, was we went around and copied the thieves pattern we went round the hotels and we had a good look at what we thought was likely to be stolen. Things that didn't have, bite, that have locks on, things that were hidden away, so that's what we targeted on. But we seen our bike with a big lock on it, and then round the corner there was another bike with hardly any security, out of line of CCTV. That's what we would set up on, uh, and we set up on those bikes to see if criminals would approach them. So one success we had was uh, we got a report of bikes acting suspiciously uh, the night before and then a motorcycle was stolen from one of the hotels in the uh, city centre. Uh, knowing that thieves uh, like to operate in habits, we went back the next day uh, and set up and waited for them in a covert operation. It didn't take us too long, in fact only about half an hour before we had two people on mopeds coming in. One of them was a stolen moped on false plates and we were able to block the exits so that they couldn't get out. Once they realised they couldn't get out, one of the bikes was abandoned and we arrested two people from the other bike as well. One of them was in possession of a knife. Actually, and so we're delighted, that's one of the successes that we can claim that we've caught thieves who were stealing motorcycles in Liverpool but deterred a lot of other thieves as well and reduced the numbers that were stolen from the previous year. Although we're, out, we're, we're on patrol every day and we can quickly react to instances where bikes have been reported stolen in an area or where bikes have been sighted in an area. If it's going to fail to stop for the police, then we've got a number of tactics that we can use to bring it to a conclusion. Yeah, so one of the things we use is a DNA spray. If we see you on a stolen bike or riding antisocially, we can spray it on you, it takes heat off us. We don't have to follow you around the city. We can simply wait until you get off the bike, find you at a later date, uh, the DNA spray doesn't come off for weeks and weeks and uh, we can forensically link you to that incident on that bike at that time. If you want to stop a, a stolen bike then uh, once we've got all our parameters in place and we've got all our authorities in place then we'll deploy stop sticks uh, in Merseyside. We don't have a problem with it. It's not for people who are speeding along the road on their own bikes. It's not for that, it's for stopping organised criminals on stolen bikes. It doesn't have any effect on them at all other than puncture the tyres. They don't, it doesn't make them fall off straight away. The only way they're going to fall off is if they do something like over brake or over steer to fall off a bike. So yeah. when I joined Rose Policing, we had a uh, four week standard motorcycle course. And you went away for a few months, developed your skills, went back and did a, uh, a four week advanced course uh, takes you to a different level again totally and then after you've uh, developed your skills on that we, you go to a two-week VIP uh, riders course as well to learn the intricacies of escort riding. Yeah you can do up to 250 miles a day, uh, we're quite lucky in Merseyside we've got the Peak District, the Lake District and North Wales all on our doorstep so we get a really good array of roads to go and lane corners and bends on and uh, how to look for obstacles further down the road uh, but we also do a lot of days where we're in the city, concentrating on low speed manoeuvres and we'll spend time on a pan doing uh, cone work in and out just like on your CVT. This is my issue patrol bike that I, that I use when, I'm, uh, when I go out on the streets or when I go to, uh, to do VIP escorts. BMW R1200RT, uh, the latest water-cooled model. It's a great cruising bike, really comfy. Uh, plenty of kit in, our, in the panniers uh, that, that we do with it. Uh, although primarily I wouldn't carry loads in it being the sergeant, but uh, it's a great platform for me to be able to 
uh, oversee or supervise my staff um, throughout the day on, on lots of the operations that we do in Merseyside. So all of the big cultural events in Merseyside, the operations bike team will, will be present, like the Grand National or the forthcoming Giants, uh, the Labour Party Conference, all of those things, the operations bike team will be there either in a traffic management role or in, a, uh, in an engagement role uh, as in the, the, the Red Bull Drift Shifters that were here a couple of weeks ago where we managed to get over our road safety campaigns as well. So typically, I, well, I put 5,000 miles on this roundabout uh, over the last year, but it's not the only bike I ride. Depending on what we're doing, I'll ride different bikes. Yeah, so these are a couple of the other bikes we, we use on Merseyside here. We have Honda VFRs and uh, Honda Fireblades, both um, unmarked as you can see. Uh, but both equipped with uh, warning lights and uh, sirens. The VFR carries uh, four-way HD cameras on it as well, and which is housed, all the screens are housed in the, uh, the pannier so we can show people evidence of uh, what we've recorded more or less at the roadside. The VFR, yeah, with its four-way cameras, has got this one especially really good. It's on a loop continuously. As soon as we activate it, it records the last uh, 15 or 20 seconds, uh, and we had a really good success with the uh, a stolen car with this one. Alongside the, uh, the stolen car, he didn't even know the police were onto him uh, until we put the blue lights on and he looked directly at us. Full HD quality facial imagery. Uh, we let him go on his way, uh, circulated his picture and he was arrested the next day uh, for burglary. And we also use uh, our Honda CRF 250s, um, which we use for getting into inaccessible areas where road bikes can't go or large open areas where a, an officer on foot might be, uh, it might take just far too long to, to search. These can get into parks for us, uh, into our bigger recreational areas, and members of the public love it when, when we're in there. Um, although some of them, you can see them, they think, oh, is this more dirt bikes coming down? And as soon as we realize the police, uh, we, we don't get anything but smiles from people, really. So in, in addition to our uh, CRFs, they've, they've replaced uh, our old trusty DRZs, which we've had for a, a good 10 years on Merseyside now. Everybody loves riding these, and they're all a bit scuffed and a bit bashed. And it doesn't really matter if you if you fall off one of them when we're up and down in the the off-road areas. They're being great, and everyone does like them. Bikes are, bikes get stolen for a number of reasons. They get stolen by criminals to use on a daily basis. Uh, they get stolen uh, to be stripped for parts. Uh, it was quite important that the latest MCI initiative uh, about the multi-layered security brings us to putting trackers on bikes. Uh, which some of the manufacturers are doing at the moment, aren't they now? Uh, if, if you've got a tracker on your bike and it's on the move, uh, I'd be very surprised if you didn't get a police response straight away to it. Yeah, so if, if you're unlucky enough to get your, your bike stolen or all the suspicious activity around your bike, you should phone the police because although you might not get a face-to-face -face interaction with the police or who come to your, the scene of, of the crime as such, it, it will be analysed and it will be able to us to direct our resources to the area where, where it's happening. And we're dealing with organized criminals. Uh, generally speaking, a lot of firearms incidents in Merseyside do have uh, some sort of motorcycle or quad attached to it, uh, are somewhere along the line. Uh, and that's the sort of people we are dealing with and tackling on Merseyside. If you're gonna report your bike being stolen, it's equally important to report any suspicious activity that you might have noticed if you park it in the street somewhere or you've, you've noticed activity around the back of your house or where you lock your bike up, just make sure you phone in and report that. So there's a perception that the police don't do anything about it and we don't make any arrests for that, but the, the harsh realities are unless we catch somebody on your bike which has just been stolen, the realities are we're probably not going to get them arrested for the theft of your bike. But five, six, seven months down the line when your bike is recovered, there might be other uh, evidence on it to link us to individuals who we can't prove stole it but we can certainly prove have handled your property. Every time I've met you, you're always in your leathers. Oh, I know, I wear leathers every day of the year I think so it's um Even when you I mean obviously you're in the car now but uh, yeah. in fact, last time I met you you in the car you said you had the time yeah we um we never know if we're going to be riding bikes all day and yeah. to, 
I feel it on the second one, I'm going to get changed right out of my leathers. So it's, um, it, it's easier to get in leathers, and plus the fact I ride my own bike to work anyway. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I live on my own bike, so I have my leathers on coming into work. And then it makes sense just to stay in leathers, because I'm going to be on and off a bike all day. So I'll just do that really. Do you reckon this is, it's almost vocational this, I mean your whole team seems to just love riding. Is that? Okay, okay. I, yeah, and I think you've hit it on the head there. The teams here, you've got Paul on the left there, just put a stop on for us. I'm going to roll through here, and it, this just depends on a team working together. And everybody has been riding bikes since they were very, very uh, young. Yeah. Bikes become, although it's a job for us, it's a George, pull to the left. Just go to the left and pass on the offside. Cheers, got you. Um, so yeah, so we all we've all been riding bikes a long time, and you know we it's we ride bikes every day at work like this it, in a team situation. It sort of it runs through to what we we do normally. What's this one? Up there? Um, nice play, cash guy. Um, is it, when we finish work, we actually, it's, it's a bit sad really, I think, but um, we go on holiday together as well. So yeah. the whole team will will go to the Isle of Man together. Um, we'll go to the Isle of Man off when there's no racing on, so we can ride our own bikes around there. Uh, we, we like to, um, this year we've been to Scotland on a big uh, North Coast route. We did, did four days around the north of Scotland. I think everybody went. Only one person didn't go because his bike packed in, literally with a day to go. Only one that missed out. So it's not just about being a, a, a team that works well together, is it? It's a, it's a, you like you like to seem like a team of mates. You enjoy riding bikes around. You have to have a job that you get to ride bikes. It's great, isn't it? You come. <laughs> it is. Isn't it? You come. To, it's great because you can you can come to work. You like the people you work with, uh, and when you get to work, you can ride your own bike into work. And then once you get into work. You can like pick from about the five bikes that you fancy riding that day, yeah. uh, and it makes it makes life really easy for me. I was talking to somebody earlier, and they're, they're saying how awesome it is that you you know you get into you'll be riding off road, or you'll be riding a fire blade one day, or you'll be you know, and you've got such scenery around here anyway. Yeah, I, mean, I suppose you're pretty lucky with where you are geographically because you've got the Lake District and everything, haven't you? Yeah, uh, and and you know. So, we get to, I mean, we, we get to really, we, we can manipulate what we do really as such, so um, it, if we've had a long summer in the city, you know, one of the treats that we'll do is we'll go to the Lake District to practice our corners and bends, because with the best will in the world, you don't practice your corners and bends in here, do you? But, so we'll just jump on the motorway, quickly get to the Lake District, so up to the Trough of Boland in Lancashire, and go out. But in reality, is it five police officers that are doing that? Is it five mates on police bikes? Yeah. Uh, probably five mates on police bikes, isn't it? Because we we go to all the normal tea homes that people go to, yeah. and uh, have a cup of tea and a burger on the day. And we do the same with our with the CRFs. Yeah. Uh, we'll pack them in a van. Yeah. And uh, with the DRZs. What we said before, people like the DRZs better because if they drop them and bash them. Nobody cares about it anymore. <laughs> so if you're bashing your bike, there's a bit of a problem with it. Too much paperwork. Yeah, too, a lot of paperwork. Well, I think the, the DRZs have got that many bashes on them already. That no, it's good, no, nobody it's knows whether there's a new one or an old one. So, well, and I think it's accepted, isn't it, on off-road bikes that they're going to go on their side. Yeah, sure. So we have a, we've got a great loop in the, in the lakes that, that we do. It's about 40 odd miles of green lanes. Um, a little bit of road work on it, but most of it is off-road over yeah. some fairly rocky stuff and that, and it's always a good laugh because, you know, you, you like to think we're professional, but we're not, you know, we're not the best riders around in the world at all the disciplines, so we, we can not struggle on some of the really rocky sections in the lakes, like, you know? oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. people on mountain bikes go past us. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nice for me to be able to, like, to do that because it instills like a team doesn't it you know and yeah. and then it, that, that pays off back here again today when we're, we're able to just do this and just roll around the road to 30 mile an hour uh, and the team's just making it really easy for us to yeah. to get from the city centre to the south end 
I think you only see a very limited side uh, of policing with general media and kind of what you what's out there and it's either it's all pretty bleak most of the time but you, you genuinely the team and when we bumped into Chiefs everybody seems fairly not relaxed you know there's clearly a lot of work going on but there's everybody seems to be enjoying it everybody seems passionate about it yeah it is I think it is I think people realise that motorbikes are they're great fun they get your places, don't they? Yeah. They're, they're great fun, but they're really they're great tools for the police as well. Yeah. You know, imagine trying to do this with four BMW police cars or four police cars. Yeah. You couldn't, could you? You know, yeah. you'd, be, you'd be stuck in traffic behind me. Uh, and this, we're not, you know. Late, late, One thing you said about, uh, I think it showed up with that TT stuff, was how important your, like, your presence in places is and prevention. Because you can't measure preventive crimes can you can't count them and I think people will moan saying they don't see bobbies on the beat but that's exactly what you're doing isn't it you're, you're being out there and stopping the crimes happening yeah and what you know what we're on a beat as well we're on a beat albeit on motorbikes but I like to think that most motorcyclists are far more approachable than um, the people think police cars are well, police officers are stuck in police cars and what have you well, in reality, we, we're out with, uh, in the elements all day, where we are. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're there. We, we go to all the community events in Merseyside. We go to the community events. We will do all the sporting events, all the major cultural events in Liverpool. Uh, and it's, it's really good. Some of our best days there. I know the, the chief was there before. Yeah. And, and uh, he's really supportive. And he gets us involved in some of his charities. And you know, we, we take um, disadvantaged children to the fun fair for the day things like that the, the public don't think it happens anymore it is, it is. but it does yeah. so yeah. Two for your neck. i can tell who's going past by the way the bike sounds i don't know who rides i know who rides really? like, yeah <laughs> i can tell he likes to hold on to his gears more <laughs> yeah he does yeah <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.